You've already got the hang of that force equation. Force equals mass times acceleration. Now the things that we've been subbing into this equation are as follows. We've been subbing a constant in for force, 10 newtons, 12 newtons. We've been subbing a constant in for mass, 10 kilograms, 12 kilograms. And for acceleration, we've been subbing in a vector or a constant. Now, in this video, we're gonna change that by changing the force. Instead of a constant force, we're gonna do a variable force. Now, in practice, this happens all the time. If this person is pushing this rock, the force that they'd be applying to the rock at the start might be very high. But as they get more and more tired, the force that they apply to that rock might get less and less and less. We might get some sort of decay curve. This exponential function, we could sub into this equation because the force is changing over time. So that's essentially what we're gonna do here. We're gonna be subbing in variable forces instead of constant forces. So this is the question we're gonna do. We've got a body of mass five kilograms initially at rest. It's being acted on by this variable force, six minus T squared Newtons between the time zero and six seconds. Find the speed of the body after six seconds. Now, this force, just so we can think about it a little bit, it looks like it's a quadratic there. So it starts with a force of, um, at time zero, it's gonna have 36 newtons of force, but at time six, at time six, we're gonna be applying zero newtons of force. So you can see for those six seconds, the force starts really high, and then it eventually comes down to zero by the end of the six seconds. Um, you don't have to draw this picture, of course. I'm just showing you that the force is changing, and it's good to think about that when you're doing these questions. So super easy, force equals mass times acceleration, and then let's sub in force, and let's sub in the mass, and we don't know what the acceleration is. Easy so far, six minus t all squared equals five a. All right, let's just make that in terms of a. So we have a function now for acceleration. Now, let's read what we want. We want the speed of the body after six seconds. So in other words, we wanna know the velocity of this object after six seconds. So we're gonna need the integral of our acceleration. All right, I'm not gonna show you how to integrate that. You know how to do integrals now. V equals negative 1 15, six minus t cubed plus c. Now, initial velocity, if I sub zero in here, we know it was initially at rest, so its initial velocity was zero. So let's sub those two bits of information here. V equals zero, negative 1 15, six minus zero cubed plus C. And then we'll solve that for C. You don't need to watch me do that. So C equals 72 over five which means that our velocity function, we know all of it now, negative 1 15, six minus t cubed plus 72 over five. And we wanna know the velocity or the speed at uh, time six seconds. So sub t equals six into that equation. And when we do that, we get a zero here. That's just gonna leave us with velocity equals 72 over five. Checking for units here, um, we had newtons, we had seconds, so we're gonna end up with minute, uh, meters per second. So the velocity after six seconds is 72 over five meters per second, done. Now, of course, that's only half of the question because not only do we need to find the speed, but we also need to find the distance traveled. So we've got a velocity function. If we have a displacement function, that's really gonna help us. So here I'm integrating that velocity function to get my displacement function. This is my displacement function with an unknown C value. And to find that C value, I can just make wherever this rock was be my initial displacement zero at time zero. So sub displacement zero times zero and solve for C. Now when we do that, we get a C value of negative 21.6. Again, I'm not gonna bother subbing in T zero and X zero there for you to look at it. You know how to do that. All right, so that gives me a displacement function, which looks like that. Now, I wanna know the distance traveled in six seconds, so it's just subbing in t equals six at this point. And when we let t equals six in this equation, we get a displacement of 64.8 meters. So, after six seconds, it's traveling at 72 on five meters per second, and uh, it has traveled 64.8 
meters. So there's a variable force. It all starts here, subbing this in. Pretty straightforward after that. Now, I'd be very tempted to stop this video here, but there's another example that I think you need to see. Uh, if the resultant force is 3 plus 6x, this is the part of the question that's interesting here. Okay. Now, the reason it's interesting is because our variable force is not being given in terms of t. Here, you can see our force was 6 minus t squared newtons. The force was a variable force uh, with respect to time. This is not. This is a variable force with respect to where it is, its displacement. So it's fine. We'll sub that into our equation, and then we're going to have to do some sort of uh, something fancy to figure out our functions. And so this is where you can see the problem. I've got my formula. I've subbed in the force of 3 plus 6x and the mass 3 times a. Um, rearrange to make a the subject, and I get the acceleration is equal to 1 plus 2x, where x is displacement. Now to come up with a velocity function, I'm going to have to find some way to integrate this. And you know how to integrate acceleration when you've got x, uh, when it's in terms of x. Using this formula is going to be the easiest way to do it. So we know that uh, d dx half v squared is equal to acceleration, which is equal to 1 plus 2x. All right. Now, integrate both sides. We get half v squared equals the integral of 1 plus 2x with respect to x. And half v squared is equal to whatever the integral of that is, which is x plus x squared plus c. Now, it's tempting to muck around here, but let's deal with that c now. So, let's look back at the question. It says, uh, if the resultant force equals 3 plus 6x, v equals 2 when x equals 0. So, we can sub that in and find c. All right, so find c when v equals 2 and x equals 0. Subbing that in, we get a c value of 2, which means we get this equation here. Half v squared equals x plus x squared plus 2. Now, the question was, find v when x equals 2. So, really straightforward from here. We're just solving for v when x equals 2. All right, so there's a little bit of working. We get a velocity equal to plus or minus 4. Now, is there anything preventing it from being plus or minus 4? I can't see anything within the question that would prevent it from having a positive or a negative velocity. Remember, velocity is directional. It says this object is moving in a straight line. It might be moving backwards and forwards along that straight line, harmonic motion. And if that's the case, then it would make sense that when it has a displacement of a particular amount, two units, its velocity might be positive when it's going that way and negative when it's coming back the other way. So in this case, I'm pretty happy with a velocity of plus or minus. All right, uh, that's two examples of variable forces.